Welcome to a brand new adventure of Wild of the World, because today you're traveling with us to an absolute corner of Europe, because all the way in the east of the Mediterranean Sea, between Turkey and Egypt, is the beautiful island of Cyprus. It's a new year and time for new gear. In this video I use a brand new Sony ZV-E1. It's the smallest full-frame camera in the world, and it has a flip screen, so it's ideal for vlogging and traveling. Wow guys, it's still early in the morning and the world trip might be over for now, but we're going on the first holiday where Celine is going to have her first flight. She's going on a plane to Cyprus. So here we come. In the cold Netherlands, we drive from Rotterdam to Eindhoven airport. Children are very excited because we fly the furthest that you can fly within Europe. The country of Cyprus consists of a Turkish and a Greek part. For the next 10 days we'll be in the Greek section in hotspot Paphos. The town of Paphos is even older than our calendar. It dates back to 306 BC. Nowadays there's an old town and a new town and it has 75,000 inhabitants. In 1980 the old town was put on the UNESCO World Heritage List and in 2017 this was also the cultural capital of Europe. It's time to see some old buildings guys. On this beautiful green peninsula there are many ruins and an old harbor. Over here we find most of the sites. The first place that we encounter here in the old town of Paphos is the Paphos Castle. It was built by the Byzantines to protect this beautiful harbor over here. It was all destroyed in 1222 by a big earthquake, but it was rebuilt again in 1570. And in the meantime it was used as a prison, a fortress and even a storage place for salt. And so while I'm walking around here on the walls of the harbor, you can imagine that the view would be best up there. So I'm going to the castle. Let's go guys! If you ask me, it does resemble a prison, but a very small one at that. I get a little claustrophobic in here. For 2 euro 50, we can take a look on the roof of the fortress. From here they could see the invading ships emerging at the horizon. And we have a beautiful view of the sea and the city. Walk along the Pleasant Boulevard to the next site. Paphos is one big open air museum.
The next place of big importance that we visit here in Paphos is the archaeological park of Paphos. This big green peninsula where you can only find ruins dating back all the way to the 4th century. Because back then this used to be the capital of Cyprus. This small part in town where you can see uh, things that go all the way up to the Middle Ages. So you'll find some Greek mythology, you'll find Roman villas, beautiful mosaic tiles, a lighthouse, temples, the oldest Christian churches and even tombs of former kings. This first place is called Saranta Colones. The arches of this castle from 1200 are still standing. Unfortunately, the rest of the beautiful castle was destroyed by an earthquake. What makes this park so unique is how well they preserved some of the detailed stuff like the mosaic tiled floors I was telling you about. One of the best ones you can find over here in the House of Dionysos. In 1962, these mosaic works were accidentally discovered by a farmer who was plowing in the field. They are so extremely detailed and so well preserved that they are among the most beautiful mosaic works in the entire world. Of course a great sight and also on a hill with a perfect view on the city is the lighthouse. It's not that old but it's beautiful and especially this guy likes it a lot. One of the best places among the ruins, I guess, is always the stairs of the old theater when you feel like you're inside the old Roman Empire. Beautifully preserved. The best place, or should I say the only place, where you can see the columns standing up is the Villa of Thesis. What do you think, guys? <laughs> <laughs> After this interesting history lesson in the bright sunshine, we look for some refreshment on the boulevard. Ice cream for Jens and a beer for Dad. The restaurants in Cyprus are certainly not expensive. A pint will cost you about 2 euros and you can already eat for 10 bucks. Hi, hello. Uh, we come to check in. Welcome. During our holiday on Cyprus, we'll be staying in two different locations around Paphos. The first one is a beautiful apartment just outside of the old town, because this is downtown park.
Paphos isn't very big, but for the area I recommend that you take a rental car. Our modern apartment is located just outside the old town in a prime location. Prices drop dramatically in the low season. Well, the weather is already wonderful, so I say, why not? Near the apartment we meet the local community at the city playground. Today we cook something at home, go to bed early and the next day there will be plenty to discover. So the beach where I'm going is very special, but the way over there is already very adventurous because this up here is the road I was driving on earlier and this is the path to the beach. It's no place for claustrophobia. <laughs> Today it's time to drive a bit over to the eastern side of Cyprus and on a half hour drive we already find this world famous place from the Greek mythology because this is Aphrodite's rock and Aphrodite she was the goddess of beauty and this is the place where she rose from the water. Uh, for the Romans she is also known as Venus so it's a world famous place and I'm gonna see it from above with my drone. At Aphrodite's rock I immediately see how beautiful the southern coast of Cyprus is. The water is crystal clear everywhere and has the most beautiful blue and turquoise shades. We are still in Europe. But with a sailing distance of about 200 kilometers, you are in Lebanon. And within 400 kilometers, you can sail to Egypt. A car trip along the coast of Cyprus is breathtaking and I can highly recommend it. I drove a bit to the other side guys and over there you have an amazing view, no crowds on the rock over there. The sun has just turned a little bit, this view is perfect. We really enjoyed that apartment guys, just outside of town, nice and quiet, not too much going on over here, just beautiful sunshine all day. 
But now we're moving on to the next apartment and I heard it's even better because it's right in the middle of town with all the bars and restaurants, so even more holiday. Let's go. I guess I wasn't lying when I said we were moving to an even better apartment because we're right next to the beach, the busy boulevard, and this is the apartment at De Palmiers. This is one of the best places we have ever stayed. We have all the amenities in this luxurious apartment. It is quiet, very relaxed and the weather is perfect this time of year. What a life, guys, what a life. Well, the sun is shining, you guys might think it's the heart of the summer. But unfortunately, it's February, so the water in the pool is super cold. So I'm going in. It just keeps getting better and better. If we even find a restaurant where you can choose three courses from an entire menu for $12.50. And for two bucks you can also get a carafe of local wine. Why not? For the next little road trip we drive more inland, where most of the beautiful traditional villages await. The route through the mountains alone is fantastic. I just want me to find it Cause I'm not done I just want me to find it It's time to exchange the coast for the mountains. It's time to experience some real Cypriot culture. And for that we end up in the village called Omodos in the Trodos Mountains. Because over here at 800 meters there's a quiet little traditional village that was founded in the 11th century. You can visit a monastery, you can walk around inside the walls and it's famous for its honey, jewelry, lace and above all wine. And I'm gonna explore that last one guys.
we notice that many sites in Cyprus are free of charge. This is also the case in the Timios Stavros Monastery in Amodos, where we take a walk through the Middle Ages. Over the centuries, the wine village was built around this monastery. The funny thing is, I'm inside the monastery, which is the most important building in Amodos, a very old, from the 11th century, and there is nobody here, no tourists at all. And it gives me that Game of Thrones kind of vibe. Even in the little church in the center of the monastery, there is nobody. It's like a ghost town. One last picture, guys. And then we saw this amazing little town. Look at the streets and the buildings. Time for some wine. It's like I said that the Trodos Mountains is one of the most famous places for the wine in Cyprus, so I have to taste it, even though it's 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay, I'm joking, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, I'm gonna taste it, guys. It's really good. You can taste that it's from right over there. I want to tell you something very special. We're still driving down the south coast of Cyprus and all of a sudden we crossed a border. Into Greece? Into Turkey? No! Into the United Kingdom because there is still a small part of the United Kingdom here in Cyprus and we just passed that small bit so woohoo! <laughs> Worth mentioning. And so you can visit three countries on the island of Cyprus. In the Greek part we enjoy the beautiful boulevard again and there is even more UNESCO World Heritage waiting for us. For another great archaeological site, we go to the tombs of the kings. And rather than kings, it was actually high officers and aristocrats that were buried here. People with money. And as you can see, it's really big. It's a subterranean system that all lead to graves and we can actually go inside these tombs. It's kind of creepy, but worth seeing. <laughs> The tombs that are carved out of the granite rocks look like regular houses to me. 
As I walk through this City of the Dead, I find myself to be in the game Tomb Raider. Another cool fact guys, because they actually found similar graves, these tombs in Alexandria in Egypt. And this proved how big the Greek Empire was at the time. Like I told you guys, these tombs look like houses, as if people could have lived here. They're quite big, but all the holes inside are actually graves, so it's still kind of creepy. It's like being inside the pyramids, something like that. Inside the tombs that are the most beautifully preserved, you'll find colons like this one, and you can see all the chambers attached to it on all sides. This is really like walking in ancient Egypt. Today is a beach day and one of the best beaches that you can find in all of Cyprus happens to be near Pafos. Just a 20 minute drive to the north and we arrive at this place behind me. This is Coral Bay and just like the name suggests, you feel like you're in the Caribbean with super blue water that's super clear for snorkeling and it's pretty from above with the drone. So let's have a Caribbean day at the beach guys. the drone we see how spectacular the blue coral bay is. It is certainly not inferior to the Caribbean Sea and you can do some good snorkeling over here. it's just a little too cold to dive into the water in February. But we do enjoy the beach and the sea. That's it guys, unfortunately for today's episode, but as you could see, we really enjoyed Cyprus to the fullest. The Greek part of Cyprus is so beautiful, with so many cultural sites, beaches, beautiful nature, mountain villages, and yeah, the weather was perfect. I didn't expect that in February, but it's already very hot. On the other hand, it's almost in the Middle East, so the weather is nice all year round. I'll see you in the next episode. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you soon in any other place all over the world. Ciao! Tune in to Wout of the World next time when we visit the real Caribbean. We take an epic journey to many islands and start with the Dominican Republic. So don't forget to subscribe and always travel with us.